What's going on guys? Back up here at Grafton Archery. My name's Caleb Schrackengast and this is Buffalo Creek Outdoors. All right guys, so let's compare these two bows. We've got the flagship Matthews Lift 29 and a half, and then you've got the flagship Hoyt Alpha X 30. We're gonna take the data that I've got off the new score sheets uh, that I came up with. If you saw my last video, and you can also go down below in this video and click on the link in the description below. You can actually print or edit these sheets and use these sheets on your own if you want to, if you choose to do so. Uh, it just sends you to my Google, Google Drive where you can actually pull these sheets up. Now, the scores that I'm going to, the comparisons between these bows are essentially my opinions the same as the original videos, the individual reviews that I did on these bows. These numbers are going to be slightly different because of the new sheets. So let's go ahead and get on into it. So for shootability, both of these bows get a six. I'll put these charts up in the video. Hopefully you'll be able to see them. Uh, but I gave both of these bows a six for shootability based on the measurements that I got on these bows. Uh, the Matthews is going to have quite a bit longer uh, riser length at 29 and three quarter, and the riser on the Hoyt Alpha X 30 was 27 and an eighth. So even though technically axle to axle length, the 29 and a half is shorter than the Hoyt, actual overall riser length, which I think may be even more important than axle to axle length in accuracy and shootability is quite a bit longer. Brace heights, you got six and three sixteenths on the Hoyt, six inch on the Matthews. So that one's gonna give a nod to the Hoyt. Reflex, you've actually got more reflex by a quarter inch on the, on the Hoyt, and which is two and, two and a quarter inch reflex and two inch reflex on the Matthews. When I'm measuring the reflex, guys, I'm going from the pivot point in the limbs, measuring back to the back of the grip. Whether or not you think that's important, that's completely up to you. Statistics show, and a, people that are a lot better at archery than I am will say, most will say that the reflex in these bows does make a difference on felt torque and actually like the transferred torque from your grip to the bows. So take it for what it's worth. Both these bows ended up with a score of a six based on my chart here. Tunability. I'm gonna populate both of the graphs or both the charts up here so I don't have to individually go through the scores that I gave, but a total score of seven to the Hoyt for shootability, <clears throat> for tunability. Total score of a six to the Matthews for tunability. The reason that these bows are so close is because they have a lot of the same features, but they are some, there are some differences. So let's talk about the differences in these bows. You're gonna have quarter inch draw length adjustability uh, in the mods on the Hoyt, and you're also gonna be able to adjust your let off with the mod that's already on the Hoyt. With the Matthews, you can also adjust draw length and let off, but it's an individual uh, mod for each setting that you want. So if you want 85%, 27 inches, <coughs> 70 pounds, that is a mod. If you want 80%, 27 inches, 70 pounds, that's another mod. It's a little bit more of a hassle to change, but where we get into speed, you'll see where the, where the benefit comes to having the mod designed that way. Uh, grips, I would probably say I prefer the Hoyt grip over the Matthews grip, um, but with that said, I take the grip off of either one of these bows if I were to shoot them. I would probably shoot either the UV grip or side plates on the, on the Matthews, <clears throat> and I would probably shoot side plates on the Hoyt. That's just me personally. You may love either one of these grips or hate one of the other of these grips. Me personally, I don't hate either one of them. I just don't prefer either one of them. But if I had to give the nod, it would go to the Hoyt. Timing adjustability you're going to have to do with a, with a press. <clears throat> There's some other bows out there you can adjust timing with uh, an adjustment on the cams. Um, a couple of the big things with the Matthews is you can actually take the strings and cables off the Matthews 
with the SAS system without having to have a press. That's huge if you're in the field and you need to work on your bow. <clears throat> you can't do that with the mat with the Hoyt. You have to put it in a press. Uh, integrated systems. These bows are very similar. Um, they're going to have the dovetails on the back for the integrated rest, like what I've got here, like the integrated. Uh, this is the MX1 from QAD, and this is the MX2, uh, the Hoyt version, excuse me, and the Matthews version. You can also get these in a non-branded version. I just grabbed these because, man, I got the hiccups, because they're branded to these bows uh, and they're designed to fit exact with these bows and be already set up. So site-wise, you're gonna have your bridge lock technology on the, the Hoyt, I mean the Matthews, and you're gonna have the Picatinny rail machined into the aluminum uh, of the Hoyt. I really like the way this thing's machined in. They did a really good job. Another cool thing about the Hoyt is they're designed to accept the Garmin, uh, in the Garmin um, Zero sights. They actually have a machined area in here where you can actually run the cord to the site through the, through the riser of the bow, which that's pretty cool design there. Ultimately, it's gonna be up to personal preference. I prefer the bridge lock over the dovetail or the Picatinny rail personally, um, but it's kind of up to whatever. Either one's gonna be great. It's essentially still playing the same role as trying to get that site as close to the center of the riser and the center of the weight, keeping this bow, these bows balanced as possible. So for tunability, Overall, because of the quarter inch draw length adjustments and the ability to adjust your let off on the bow without a press, without a new mod, uh, I gave one, it's one point higher on the Hoyt than the Matthews. That's gonna be one of the numbers that's probably changed since my original video, just because I've actually given, giving data, taking data that I have on a chart and scoring based on the data and not on my personal opinion which I hope you appreciate that because I'm trying to make this as objective as possible um, and leave my opinion mostly out of the way I score these bows. Some things that's not possible, but I tried my best to kind of take opinion out of most of the scoring on these bows. Draw cycle. Both of these bows got an eight on draw cycle. Even though they got an eight, it's a completely different draw cycle on both of these bows. They're both extremely smooth, in my opinion. You can probably draw a handful of more pounds on the Hoyt versus what it feels like on the Matthews. But I gave them an eight based on smoothness of the draw cycle. And even though I say you could probably draw a couple more pounds on the Hoyt, that's going to be completely up to what you're used to on draw cycle. I'm very used to the Hoyt draw cycle because I've mostly shot Hoyt for the last 10 years. But this is the first Matthews where I've drawn the Matthews in a long time where I've drawn the Matthews and been like, wow, this is nice. So I gave both of these bows an eight on draw cycle. Letdown. This is a huge key in a hunting bow, in my opinion. Being able to let the bow down in that moment of truth where deer comes in, you're at full draw for way too long, you need to let down, let the deer move or whatever animal move. Or if you're like myself and you self film, you need to let down and move your camera. Being able to let these bows down smoothly in that moment of truth and not wanting to yank your shoulder off, that's a huge, huge deal to me. That's why it's still a 10 point scale. The Hoyt, is a dream to let down. I mean, it's just there and it's down, there and down. Like there's nothing, it doesn't want to yank your shoulder off at all. Whereas the Matthews, it does have pretty good little snatch, not, not, not bad, I shouldn't say that. You can definitely tell a difference between these two bows, which bow is easier to let down. Now, with that being said, you are getting more speed out of the Matthews. So that's probably part of it, the way the cam is designed but I gave the Hoyt a 10, Matthews a seven. Back wall. I gave both of these bows a 10 because I don't think you can get much better than what these bows have currently on them. With that being said, if I had to give a nod to one or the other, the better back wall in my opinion is the lift. Even though I gave them both a 10, they're that close, I would still give the Matthews a, uh, the slight edge to the Hoyt on back wall for noise 
Both of these bows are extremely quiet for vibration. Both of these bows are extremely dead in the hand. Slight vibration, slight vibration. I gave the vibration a five, a score of five on the lift and a four on the Hoyt because the, Mat the Matthews, whatever slight vibration it does have is gone in a sec, like a split second, it's gone on the bow that I've shot. You might shoot these bows and you might feel something completely different. I can't control what you feel, so don't chew me up and spit me out based on what I'm saying about vibration. For whatever reason, guys seem to have a big hang up on what I say about vibration on certain bows. The Matthews, I would say, has less vibration, and I don't think without adding accessories, a bow is gonna get much more dead in the hand than what the Matthews is. The Hoyt is also extremely dead in the hand, but it's not, it's not even the best Hoyt as far as vibration. It does have a slight amount of vibration, but it dissipates quickly. So like I said, noise, a five, vibration, a four and a five. So the Hoyt gets the, I mean, the Matthews gets the slight edge in those two scores. Uh, let's talk about speeds. So for speed, both of these bows are very, very close. Uh, at 27 inches, I got 296 with a 350, 350 spine arrow. And at 30 inches, I got, what did I get? 333. Yeah, 333. So 396 or 296 and 333 at 27 and 30. And then 310 and 334. So the Hoyt, according to my scale here, got a nine. The Matthews was in between a nine and a 10. I gave it a nine and a half. The reason I gave it a higher score, even though the 30 inch shot was so close, was because the 27 inch shot was so drastically different. You're talking 14 feet a second difference between the Hoyt at 27 inches and the Matthews at 27 inches. That's where the switch weight mods on the Matthews really takes advantage over the mods on the Hoyt, even though the Hoyt has the adjust more adjustability in their mod. These Matthews mods are peak, you're getting your peak performance out of every mod. So that's why Matthews still continues to do the individual mods like they do. For guys like myself, that's huge. Weight, there's no denying this bow is so light. Like it is unreal how light this bow is. And I really think in my original video, I didn't do this bow justice for how, how light it actually is. And that's one reason why I kind of changed up my weight score and I actually added a hard chart there that I can go off of to actually score every year consistently. This bow weighs 3.99 pounds. So according to my chart, uh, the way I kind of figured up weights is I've seen 30 inch bows or shorter that are lighter than this bow in years past. They don't shoot anywhere near as great as this bow does. So 3.99 pounds on the lift, 4.55 pounds on the Hoyt. When you hold these bows against each other, you can definitely tell a difference in the weight. Now, with that being said, that might not make a hill of beans to you, but in this chart, I gave a nine and a half on weight to the lift and a six on weight to the Hoyt. Uh, from there, let's talk about balance. The Hoyt balanced decently in my hand. That's gonna be very, very dependent on what you put on the bow. But I went off a of bare bow the way it came out of the box. It was pretty good, but not quite as good as the Matthews. These Matthews, especially the 29 and a half, they're just so so light and balanced. I had to give this bow a five, gave the Matthew or the Hoyt a four. Integrated accessories. That's why I pulled these accessories out and put them on this table, guys. These bows are so like Matthews and Hoyt. Bowtech's also doing the same thing. Uh, I'm sure a lot of the other brands are doing the same thing. They're really getting specific with their accessories. Hoyt and Matthews, in my opinion, have the best option for bow specific accessories. And if I had to give the nod to one or the other, I would probably give the nod to the Matthews. I think their accessories, this bridge lock technology for the stabilizers is phenomenal. Especially if you're traveling, this is something I don't know if everybody, anybody's thought about, but the fact that I can take my if I wanted to run a 12 inch stabilizer, I can take a stabilizer, unscrew the little bolt screw on the side, the little thumb screw on the side and slide that stabilizer back where it's not touching my string, but it's back in past the, past the back of the riser and I can actually fit it in my bow case. 
Uh, and I tried that on these cases in here just to make sure that what I'm telling you is correct, but that's in theory what you can do. You can slide your stabilizer back if you want to fly or if you want to right, stick your bow in the truck, just slide your stabilizer back. Remember what hole it was in, slide it back out, tighten it in whenever you get where you're going. You don't actually have to take your stabilizer off to fit it in your bow case. Same thing with the bridge lock technology on the sight. The fact that you can loosen that little set screw on the side and run that sight all the way back, lock it down for travel, there's a lot less chance of you getting your sight bent. Uh, you can get your sight back away from the end of your bow case. The, the Hoyt, you can essentially do the same thing by just taking the sight off and remembering what groove you had it in on the Picatinny mount, uh, which is what I've been doing on my RX-7 Ultra. But if I had to give the nod to the between the two, it would definitely be to the Matthews. Uh, with that being said, there's nothing wrong with the Picatinny mount or the Picatinny mount sights for the Hoyt. Um, Quiver-wise, once again, I would have to give the nod to the Matthews quivers. They are so tight and they are so lightweight and they just work so well. Um, that the, Between the accessories, they're both great. I would have to give the nod to the Matthews. Wow, let's talk about how I have this scoring system on the integrated accessories. So the way I've got it listed here, I'll have it on the screen as well. Integrated sight, both of them have it. Integrated rest, both of them have it. Integrated stabilizer, only the Matthews has it. Hoyt is still a screw-in stabilizer, which is just fine. But it doesn't have that option. I gave it a zero there. The, spe the specific, I have it listed as spec quiver. That's specific quiver. Um, I would give the nod to the Matthews, but they both have it, and they're both great. So I gave them both a one. And then the bow stands. I have both of the stands on these bows. The Matthews is much faster and quieter and easier to put on and take off. And it also holds the entire bow off the ground, which is pretty sweet. Uh, if you're like me and you want to pack this thing turkey hunting or whatever, uh, you can take the, take the stand off if you want to. You can leave it on if you want to. You can shoot with that stand on, so I gave it a one. That's what B stand on means, that can you shoot with your bow stand on the bow. Now, the thing about the Hoyt bow stand here, which is their Ghost X 2.0, they're more like a, like a rifle bipod. And you can actually just adjust this little screw here and turn these legs however you want to turn them. So you can run them back, you can run them straight out, you can run them down, you can run them however you want them. Right now, they're kind of in the forward slash down position. They kind of lock into place. You just tighten them down. Now, one thing with the Matthew or with the Hoyt system versus the Matthew system, the Hoyt system is a little bit more of like a permanent solution. Um, they're harder to adjust. They're harder to put on. But if you plan on leaving them on your bow all the time, I would probably give the nod to the Hoyt. Uh, on that aspect. Now, at the same time, there's nothing wrong with the Matthews limb legs. They're, they're awesome. They're half the price, essentially, as the Go Sticks. These things are expensive. Uh, I think these are like 129 or 139. And the Matthews uh, limb, the XO limb legs are 79.99. Uh, so that's gonna kind of be up to personal preference. I think if I had to choose one over the other, uh, I would probably shoot the Matthews limb legs because they're easier to take off and on and they're, they lock in solid enough that I wouldn't worry about it coming off my bow. Either one's gonna be awesome. If I shoot a Matthew or a Hoyt this year, I'm gonna shoot the ghost sticks. The fact that you have that option and the fact that Hoyt now has the little uh, stand, or I can't even remember, this little machined aluminum piece uh, on their cams to keep the cam off the ground is awesome, but the way the Matthew sits, uh, the whole bow is off the ground. That's great. Now I will say, I think for, if you're hunting in heels, like if you're elk hunting or something, I can see where the Hoyt uh, stand may actually be better for that because you can articulate those legs independently. Can't do that on the Matthews. I haven't used either one of these uh, options in the mountains, so I can't speak to that 100%, but that's what it seems like to me. So for integrated accessories, a four for the Hoyt and a five for the Matthews, and then price. So the Hoyt is 1300, let's see, what do they got on here? So the Alpha X30 is 1250, the Lift 29 and a half is 1200. 
Let me make sure I'm telling you that right. Yep, 1,200. So both of these bows are under that $1,500 range, but they're either on par with that $1,200 range or they're just below it. So five on the Hoyt, six on the Matthews for price points. Uh, the fact that Matthews did all that they did on this bow and it's still that price is kind of hard to believe, but it is. Um, so I got a one point higher there. So total score on the Matthews lift, according to my new chart, is an 82. Total score on the Alpha X30 is a 78. Now, which bow am I going to pick or which bow would I pick for the 2024 season if I could only pick one bow? And I would have to give the nod probably to the Matthews. Of course, the Matthews scored higher. So if you went purely off of score, then I would 100% shoot the Matthews. But if I'm just going off of personal preference, uh, if you want a bow that is super smooth, you shoot a longer draw length, you don't plan on shooting the bow specific accessories, uh, I would say I would give the nod to the Hoyt. If you shoot a short draw length, and if you plan on shooting the accessories specifically designed by the brands for these, for these bows, I would 100% pick the lift. So far, there's a really high likelihood that I'm going to end up shooting a Matthews lift this year. I'm not sure yet because all the bows haven't came in the shop. I haven't shot all the bows, and I don't want to tell you that and then change my mind. But between these two, if I had to pick one, I would give the nod to the lift. Yes, it scored higher. That's just my opinion. That's just my score sheet. I think the benefits between the two are going to be the speed, the quietness, the longer uh, axle to, or the longer riser length, and the accessories. I think those are going to be the biggest selling points and the biggest benefits to the Matthews. I think the smoothness of the draw cycle and the ease of letdown on the Hoyt. Uh, is going to be a big selling point for it. Um, but like I said, my preference, my favorite, what I would pick is going to be this lift 29 and a half over the two. Appreciate you watching, guys. If you have any more questions, please comment down below. Don't hesitate to give these guys up here at Grafton Archery a call. If you have any questions that I can't help you with or if you just want to talk to them specifically, come up here and shoot these bows, guys. Don't go off of just what I say. You may think something completely different. Both of these bows are phenomenal. So, like I always say, guys, remember to live your life to the fullest and use your passions to bless others. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below. We'll see you on the next video.